Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you back to Tech Studio and we're going to create this cool cake top. I'm going to use, instead of Blender this time, I'm going to use Tinkercad. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I realized that Blender might be a little bit hard to use. The learning curve is a little bit difficult for some people, but Tinkercad is very easy to pick up. And I'll hold your hand throughout the process and you'll get something cool like this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the video. So we're back in Tech Studio. And if you want to make a cake topper, first thing we need to do is to type happy birthday. And since we need someone to wish a happy birthday to, I'm just going to pick myself. And then we're going to click this, I guess, magic wand button. And it's going to give us a bunch of options. We click more text. It'll give us this one, Minecraft 3D text. Click on it. That's what we want. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make this into three tiered. So actually, let's make it two tier. Okay. And then I'm going to take off the background. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we're going to go to styles and we're going to turn off the gradient. We don't want a gradient. We want two, two distinct hues. We want a gray and we want a black because what Inkscape uses to detect the edges is black and maybe white or something close to white, which the gray can be detected as that. So I'm going to click on that. We're going to leave, leave the filling pattern because it gives a little bit of character. We want to bring down the color opacity to zero. And we want to make the orientation more pronounced because we want these things to overlap. And the reason we want them to overlap is because when you overlap them, when you extrude them, it'll each word will be one object. You also want to overlap between happy uh, birthday and happy Gordo because you want this whole thing to be one object at the end. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to click blend. And you see how these things overlap. Now this is going to make some good structure for these things to be held together at the end. I'm going to do a little bit more. And that should be good enough. Now we want to leave the outline alone. We don't need to touch this, but the shadows, inner shadow and outer shadow, we want it to take, off, take out. We want this to be as plain as possible. We just want, like I said, two hues, gray and black. And that's basically it for uh, Tech Studio. Now we're going to go to download, paint transparent, download, and we're going to open this in Inkscape. So here we are in Inkscape. I'm going to go to file, open. This dialog shows up. You don't have to really click anything. Press OK. And the file is going to open. If you control middle scroll, it'll zoom out and it'll zoom in. I'm going to zoom out. So for this one, I want to we want to click on the ping itself and we're going to go to path and we're going to go to trace bitmap and this dialogue is going to show up. So from here, we want single scan. We want to go to edge detection. Now you see how it's white and it's black. Whatever is black is going to be traced. Whatever is white is going to be open. Um, it won't be a solid. So what we want to do is we want to bring the edge threshold all the way down. And we want to um, press apply. And what that's going to do, that's going to give us a path. And everything inside, or the filling inside, is going to be transparent. So what we need to do now is we need to duplicate this by right-clicking on it in the Layer and Objects tab. Like duplicate and it'll get it'll it'll duplicate the path. So now I'm gonna turn one of them off. 
And this one is, this is a bit tedious, but it's going to pay off at the end. This is something we need to do. So I'm going to click on this because what I want to do is I want to delete the edge. And that's going to basically inverse the curve and it'll fill out the filling. So I'm going to fast forward through this, but just pay attention. I'm going to click on the node tool and I'm going to have the second pass selected. Click on the node tool. I'm going to fast forward through this. So all I'm really doing is I'm going to zoom in by pressing control, scrolling, and then I'm going to select the points and I'm going to press delete and that's going to delete it. And I'm going to go through the whole entire edge, delete all the ones on the edge and I'll fast forward through it with the magic of video editing. This will take 30 seconds. I'll see you then. Okay. Now that I deleted all of it, you see the filling has turned black. Now I just got to click on this, the selector tool and it'll go back to just being just one whole object instead of just being um, individual nodes. So now we have the background and the foreground. So what you need to do now is you need to export it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file, export, and I want to export it as a plain SVG and I want to export selected only click on this, have this selected. And what it's going to do is whatever selected, that's the only thing that's going to export. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this icon here, which is the folder. And that'll take us to where we want to save it. I'm going to put this on my desktop. And what I'm going to do is because this is the foreground, I'm going to call it foreground and I'm going to press save. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to select the background. I'm going to go back to export and you see here is the background selected. So I'm going to click on the folder again and I'm going to click, I'm going to call this background. Press save. Boom. We're good. If you ever watched one of my other videos where I go over Tinkercad, Tinkercad is 100% free. You just got to create an account. It's a web based 3D modeler. Um, and it's pretty simple to use. All you got to do is drag these objects into the work plane. And you can add, you can subtract by grouping them. And there's plenty of tutorials on the internet. My tutorial will give you a quick rundown of what you need to do to use it, but I don't want to get into that. So what we need to do is we're going to click on import and then we're going to choose the file. We're going to go to where we saved it and I'm going to click on background. Press okay. And I'm going to import it. It's going to take a little bit to import. I'll fast forward. Boom is in here. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to import the foreground. So I'm going to click here, import. Sometimes it'll give you this error, meaning it's too big. I'm going to press OK. I remember that the background was 933. Um, it might not come in perfectly. That's OK. If we click on here, we click on switch flat view orthographic, and this is going to become important in a second. We're going to click here on this a view cube, click top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this over here. This shouldn't happen, but sometimes it does. It's okay. We could always fix this and we're going to click on this button right here. And what this button does is, um, what this button is doing is just basically 
scaling the object. And that looks pretty good. I mean, there are, you could always click on the up and down arrows here to get a little bit more precise. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go a little bit more just so that it overlaps. Then that should be it. So now what I want to do is I want to right click so that I could rotate my view. And then what I want to do is I want to select the whole thing, select everything. And then I want to scale it. Okay. We're going to click on this button here. It could be any of them. All the white ones basically scale. Click on that, click shift, and it'll do a uniform scale. Then I'm going to move it to the center of the work plane. I'm going to do it again so that it fits in here. And I need this to be set about 150. Hundred and sixty is okay. That's close enough. So we don't need the orthographic projection anymore. We want to come in here and this is what we're going to do now. All we need to do now is click on each one individually. You see this button right here. This lets you extrude it. So right now is 198 millimeters. This is all millimeters. So I'm going to click here. And what I want to do is I want to make it about four millimeters four and then and is reading four millimeters from the plane so it's four millimeters from here if your object is below the plane it's going to give you four millimeters from the plane no matter what and then i'm going to click here okay and then what i want to do is i want to make this about eight millimeters sorry selected the wrong thing i want to select on the foreground Still selecting. Okay. I want to unselect that and just select the foreground. And I want that to be about a six inches. Let's make this six, six. And then this one, because it was selecting everything, unfortunately, um, is not four It's three, six, five. So we're going to do four, right? So now is scale the right, um, scale the right size. And all we need to do now is select both of them again. And if we select this, it'll group it together. And now it's going to be one object. It'll take a little bit, but then it changes in one color. So now this is one object. So now what we want to do is we want to make the posts that go into the cake to hold this up. So what we want to do here is we want to grab a box and we want to drag it. Just click and drag into the work plane. And what we want to do is we want to go from the top. We might have to need, we might need orthographic again. And I want to make it about three millimeters. And all you need to really do is click on, click on this and it'll scale it to whatever dimension you want. You could always do this one too, because is right now is, um, you're changing the width by doing that. So I'm going to leave it at three and then I'm going to go back to top projection or top view. I'm going to go in here and I want to bring it all the way up to that. And then I want to bring this all the way down here. I want it to be about, I guess 80 is fine. 80 millimeters. It could be longer depending on how high you want this to be from the cake. And then what I want to do is I want to click on this top, uh, square to extrude it down because you want it to be below that. You don't want it to be above the letters. So boom, that's it. So now what you want to do is because you want to stick this into the cake, you want to bring in a, it says roof, but it's really just a triangle. Bring it in here. If you click on it or you hover over, you see this icon right here. This is the rotate icon. If you wrote, if you um, press it and drag it, you can specify what 
how many degrees you want to rotate this. So 90 degrees is basically what we want. We want to go back to the top view. We're going to come in here and we're going to basically place it on top of that. And then what we want to do is we want to click on this and we want to, if you get it close enough, it'll snap into it. So I'm going to go in here, watch it, it snapped into it. I don't want this to be that big, maybe six millimeters, but look out and go in here and be careful because it brought it down below the, the work plane. So we want to bring it up. So now we want to click, you click on this to move it up and down. So now it's on top of the work plane, but then you want to scale it down. So you want to go down and it'll snap it to three millimeters. And now in order to have these two things become one object, you select both of them. You click on this boom, one object. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to come in here. If you click on it and you drag it, you can move it. So I'm going to move it about here. And then what I want to do is I want to click on this button, duplicate and repeat. So this one, you click on it and it created a clone of it. You move it over, you put it somewhere close to the middle. And if you click it again, it'll give you the same exact dimension. So you see that 44 millimeters, boom, another 44 millimeters. And that's basically it. Now you can always come in here, select all of them, group them together. And now what you could do is you can come in here and export it. You can export it as an STL and then it'll download it. And then you could open this in your slicing software. All right. And, um, I'll print this and I'll show you how it came out. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please subscribe. And if you're a continued subscriber and you're just coming back, enjoying my videos, you're awesome. And I appreciate all the help and all the support. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Peace.